Communication, consideration, and respect are all basic but essential components to any relationship. On today's case, Ms. Bryant says her relationship lacks not just one of those components, but all of them. She says despite giving Mr. Johnson six years of her life, he's proved himself to be a controlling narcissist who loves to humiliate her in front of her friends and family. Now she's wondering what she's really holding on to. Can Mr. Johnson convince her to stay? Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. John, this is the case of Bryant versus Johnson. Thank you very much. Ms. Bryant, Mr. Johnson. Ms. Bryant, you say that for the last six years, you've endured private and public humiliation at the hands of Mr. Johnson. You say you are done being treated like a rag doll, and today you want your freedom back. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Johnson, you say Ms. Bryant's erratic behavior has been detrimental to your relationship. You are not ready to call it quits, but you want her to take accountability for her own actions. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Bryant, why are we in court today? I'm here today because he's a narcissist and he's very manipulative as well. So, I'm just, you know, over that. Mr. Johnson, what say you? Well, I'm here because I feel like Johnson gives off mixed signals. Some days she want to continue the relationship, some days she don't. But I feel like if we're going to move forward, we need to put everything on the table once and for all. So, I agree with that. The only way you come through uh, a bad time in a relationship is to address it and then decide either you can't get through it together and can part as amicable friends or you're going to try to put it in the past and actually move forward. So, let's see which side we end up on. How's that? Mm -hmm. Ms. Bryant, Maybe. take me through to how you all met and how we ended up getting here in divorce court. Um, we met at a uh, Waffle House. Um, it was, like, after the club. I thought he was, like, really handsome and everything. And, um, and just kind of went from there. And everything took off with our relationship, whatever. So... And I understand that you were a young lady that was very, um, clear about her boundaries very mm -hmm. early in your relationship. Yeah, uh, when I met him, I was, like, practicing my celibacy. So, I had been in it for, like, maybe two years... Well, a year and a half at the so time. So, now, y'all have only been together six years. Mm -hmm. So, you were 20. Yeah, I was young then. <laughs> you supposed to be practicing celibacy then. Yeah. Girl, you don't need to be out there throwing it with a whole yeah. bunch of people until you sure that's who you want. Yeah. At some point, though, you all did become intimate, correct? Yeah, we did, because I kind of felt pressured to do it in a way or whatever, because he always was like on me about, well, if you don't have sex with me, then, you know, he gonna go and do it with somebody else. So, I kind of, like, gave in after a while or whatever. But that was, like, a year and a half of uh, being in a relationship. You ended up moving in together, correct? Yes, we did. So, what was it like in the beginning? Um, at first, everything was good. You know, the, um, honeymoon stage to be the best part of a relationship. But eventually, like, we just started arguing a lot and having, like, issues and... He would say little things to me. He would gaslight me a lot and everything. What do you mean? I need examples. Um, he would compare me to other women and, um, he would always, like, kind of belittle me and stuff in front of, like, his family and friends. What do you mean? You're beautiful, girl. I mean, gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. But, um, I don't know. Like, he'll just say stuff about, like, the things I wear and, like, my hair. Like, I'm natural, so he didn't like my hair. He always wanted me to wear weave and stuff, whatever, but I like to wear my real hair and... But, girl, you done hung somebody hair on the yeah, back of it I mean, today. I... I wear it, um, I wear weave here and there or whatever, but for the most part, I like to wear my real hair, you know. Girl, hair is an accessory. You wear it yeah, the way you want to wear it. You whenever know? I feel like popping out, I'm exactly, gonna do it. Exactly, but... exactly. Yeah. What is she talking about, Mr. Johnson? I mean, throughout the years of our relationship, I feel like it was a certain ways that she could step a game up. And what, the person what that you're looking at now she... wasn't Talk always Talk to me about what game she was in and you thought she needed to step up. Give me an example. What she you came mean? off a little, um, basic. And it's just like, I just like somebody that can switch it up, you know what I'm saying, and just step with me. So, what is it that you do um, in your life that makes you say you are doing better and, and moving up uh, I mean, in your own career? What is it that I you I have do? a lot of stats. Right now, I'm a um, CDL truck driver. I just started that career, but I got a lot of accomplishments under my belt. Good for you. And does your girlfriend not work at all? At a point of time, no, she was not. And when I told her she needed to get up and get on a store, that was her saying I was beating her down, but I wasn't beating you down. I'm just trying to get you to step your game up. That was just the whole point of it. I wasn't beating her down. 
Do you work outside of the home? Yes, I um, am a bottle girl. I do bottle service at clubs. Mm -hmm. I, I work in the nightlife. I host parties and I promote and everything like that. Mm -hmm. so I get paid to go to the clubs, walk through and... Um, and get people to buy yeah, uh, bottles, expensive liquor that they don't need to yeah, buy. Yeah, like, I just like to have people, you know, let them... I can't talk. I like to um, turn people up and... Um, and have let them a have a good time. time. Yeah, have a and good And let time. me guess, you get pretty good tips for that. Yes, and apparently the tip money, you know, is not nothing, but people don't realize, like, I make a lot of money, you know, bottle girl and doing tips or whatever, getting tips. And at your age, this is the time to do the most fun stuff that you can do. Yeah, because I don't because have... Because I'm going to be honest with you, you don't want to be 40-something, 50-something, 60-year-old <laughs> being the old auntie at the club being a bottle girl. That's she not might. what you're trying to be. <laughs> she might. Excuse no. me, what makes you say something like that, sir? She don't want to get a party life up. For that to be a main job, I don't see the um, stability in it. I don't see the room for growth in it. Okay. Unless you can upgrade to a stripper. And she told me she wasn't going to do that. So I just, I just feel like it's time to let the bottle girl life go. And do I want to date somebody like that? It's like all she do is party and she thrives off attention from guys. Does she rely on you to have to supplement the income? No. I brought the table to the table. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can I say something, y'all? Yes, of course. Okay, um, when it comes down to that, like, I feel like networking is a big thing. I don't only just work in the club. I also do other things outside of it. I'm an interior decorator. Me and my mom have a business together. Like, we decorate, like, um, houses, apartments. Ms. Bryant, you don't need to justify the no, fact just... that you're a young woman yeah, and I'm... you are hustling in a manner that yeah. is working for you. I you just want to be an entrepreneur. That. Like, I don't want to work for nobody. I want to be my own boss. So, and like... are you able to afford your bill? Yes. The, are... them, them, that little job that he's, like, trying to criticize, I make good money. It pays the bills. So you go from zero to 60 real quick? Probably zero to 100, okay. if it's necessary. But I just feel like with her, she do a lot of stuff behind closed doors, behind your back. Like, she vandalized my mom's and my car. Oh, Lord! You said he was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That he's, he, when he drinks, he can be yeah, a little mean spirit. Yeah, he can be really mean, and that's when a lot of the arguments happen. What happened at Thanksgiving? Um, for Thanksgiving, um, I was asking him, did he want, like, a plate to go or whatever before I left, because we drove separate cars to his mom's house. And um, he ended up just really taking it too far, whatever. He called me an idiot or stupid or something because I asked him a question about food and he was drunk and I just was like, well, dang, like, why I gotta be all of that? And I just, like, left or whatever. He did this in front of family? Yes, like, his family. And they had to tell him that he was wrong or whatever because, like, why would you do her like that? And, you know, normally I sit there and argue with him, but at that point I just was like, I'm over it, you know? Like, I was just in my break. Mr. Johnson, what was that about, sir? <clears throat> I feel like she's passive aggressive, and that's why I'm here today because I just want to move forward. But, but you Mr. can't move Mr. forward Johnson, with somebody that's passive aggressive like this. But what happened? What would make you all go to the left? You I know, just feel like the same way she say I was drinking. We yeah. always drunk together. At times, I didn't have no boundaries. I will say that, and mm -hmm. I didn't care where we was at and who was in front of. Her. I feel like one of us can't leave the past in the past, and who is it? It's her. But you don't. She don't confess up to nothing. She's kind of like more low-key and fake with her stuff. With me, I don't know how, like, however I feel, that's how I feel. So you go from zero to 60 real quick? Probably zero to 100, <laughs> if it's necessary. But I just feel like with her, she do a lot of stuff behind closed doors, behind your back. Like, she vandalized my mom's and my car. Wait, wait, I... what happened to your car, your mom's car? What happened in that situation? We was on an um, extended breakup, and I did start publicly dating someone else. So how long was this extended breakup? I think we was broke up for, like, two weeks. That's an extended breakup? Young people are <laughs> <Take> different. <laughs> so you broke up for two weeks and you considered that an extended breakup? It was long enough. <laughs> and you started dating somebody else publicly? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So you know what that means. That was an in your face. Okay. Listen, y'all work out y'all relationship the way you want to. But when you say extended breakup, I thought y'all had not been together for two years or something like that. <laughs> two weeks? Yes, ma'am. What happened during those two weeks that you... that made her go left? Well, she, she haven't owned up to it. Because I, I didn't do it. Okay. I did not do it. <laughs> what do you think she did? She bust uh, my car window. She took my car tire. And my mom's car was at my house for the weekend because my mom was out of town. 
and my mom's car window was also busted. And what, what evidence do you have of her? Ooh, Lord! What makes you think she did that? We... I mean, she was mad. Did, do, are there cameras? Um, did you... Did anybody witness it? Did somebody come to you? Did somebody say to you, um, I saw your girl out there, I she had was a neighbor, wilding? I had a neighbor that's... Um, I said, did y'all see anything? They was like, the girl you used to date was uh, around here last night. They was outside smoking. And they said, the girl I used to date was... He saw her last night. And you think they were talking about her? It was not talking I only had her <laughs> at my house and about two others. Okay, so... Miss Bryant, did you damage these cars? I like did this? not do that. I did not do that. I don't even know how to take a tie, like jack a car up or, or do none of that. And then shout at his mama window. Like me and his mom don't have a bad relationship. Like it's always love with us. So that that's a jack, right? Yeah, like she had help. <laughs> so, so now you have a whole conspiracy theory going on that she brought some folk to the house. And she then jacked up of... the car. Yes, Your Honor. She has a lot of male friends. I told you she's a big flirt. So I wanted to get in the field with everybody because I know she didn't <laughs> do it by herself. I feel like it's the girl that he um, caught himself dating in that little two-week breakup or whatever. I feel like she did it or whatever because... Well, I'm not going to cast dispersions on anybody because if I don't have <laughs> any proof... But I do know it has to be somebody... It looked more, to be honest with you, like somebody was trying to steal something mm. and they got interrupted in the theft. But you immediately jumped to my, my ex-girlfriend did it, which makes me wonder what else was going on with y'all. We ended, um, badly that time. You ended badly? We did. Uh, she, um, called me, um, out my name. I called her out her name. And it wasn't just a small, you know, it, you know, it was that, that word. Okay. So everybody cussing everybody out mm -hmm. inappropriately. Mm -hmm. And it was a breakup. It just was something that he posted that was not supposed to be posted, like, sexually. He put you on blast. Why would you, you know, put me out there in that light or whatever, something that was supposed to be between us? I, I can't stand for this. I can't stand for this. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. You know, it's interesting because your mom, Miss Bryant, mm -hmm. has watched some of this unfold. And I asked your mom to come and be a witness today. Mm -hmm. She couldn't join us in person, but she can join us virtually. Okay. So, um, I'd like to speak to Miss Melissa Bryant right now. Hi, Ms. Bryant. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? I am well, very well, blessed and highly favored, as I like to say. Ma'am, you are um, the plaintiff's mom. Am I correct? Yes, that is correct. So you have seen these young people through some ups and downs. What was your relationship like with Mr. Johnson in the past, ma'am? In the beginning, it started off really nice. I thought he was a great guy. We interacted during uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving you know, both families, and it turned into something totally different. What changed in that relationship? I'm curious. Well, I think he did a lot of judgment towards her, being very critical towards what he expected her to do, I guess. I don't know. I just think that he was very critical of her. I, understa he I understand that he actually uh, publicly was critical of her on one of the social media channels. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I'm curious. What did he write? He he said something to the nature of it, her not being ish, in a sense. Oh. That, that she wasn't, you know, basically, you know, nothing to me is what I took it as it to be, is what I read. So, basically, he was insulting your daughter in a public way. Right. And uh, you decided to reach out to him. Um, and what did you say when you reached out? Well, I just kind of want to understand his expectations of her because I was trying to understand how was he so critical of her because he wasn't in a different place. It seems to me that they both were in the same place. And I just thought that, you know, how do you love her and disrespect her in, in the same breath? You know, I didn't understand it at all. I just didn't. And, but that, you know, and I think, Miss, wait, Miss Bryant, I, I, 
I have a note here that that's not the only time. Am I correct, Ms. Bryant? Yeah, um, without getting into, like, all the details or whatever, it just was something that he posted that was not supposed to be posted, like, sexually or whatever, but... He put yeah. you on blast. Basically, but, um... It is what it is, like... No, I'm, it's not. You're I'm, allowed to... No, I, we, I, we, I, gonna, I, we, we, we finna run it down. I we, was mad about it or whatever. It hurt my feelings. I, I, I did not... Uh, it, I did not understand why he would post something like that or whatever, because at the end of the day, we was in a relationship. So, why would you, you know, put me out there in that light or whatever, something that was supposed to be between us or whatever, you know? I, I can't stand understand. for this. I can't stand for this. I, did, I reacted off that because she had... Uh, her and um, some of her friends had claimed to come to my mom's house and uh, take back a purse that they gave to my little sister. So, it transpired from that. So, in other words, you thought it was appropriate response to this to post a photograph that was sexually suggestive in response. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like all bets is off. So, you do realize in certain states, posting those kinds of photographs are thought of as, quote, revenge. And you could be arrested for that. You do realize that. Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Bryant, tell me, what do you think should happen in this relationship? I actually think she should stay out. I think that she shouldn't go back. I think they need to go their separate ways and do something within themselves, like work on themselves. You know, Ms. Ms. Mrs. Bryant, sometimes just the words of a mama can summarize exactly uh, what the right thing to do is. I certainly do appreciate your candor, and I appreciate you having your daughters back, because that's the kind of thing that can damage a young lady's self-esteem, but I don't want her to ever think that she is the sum of what somebody else does. Um, yeah. She knows exactly who she is, and if she's raised by a strong woman, let's hope she comes out to be a strong woman. So, thank you so yes. very much, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Ms. Bryant? Okay. Are you able to get over that um... and the other incidents that you have laid out for me? No, not really. Like, at the end of the day, that messes with somebody else, so, well, you know... Well, if you can't get over it, make sure you stand on it. I mean, I... So, I'm actually, done. you know, Mr. Johnson, I think she is standing on it I for know. the first time. I, I think <clears throat> you have determined in your heart that you deserve somebody that's going to treat you with a level of respect mm. and respect the young woman that you are or are becoming. And you are not going to make all the right choices all the time. Yeah. You do have some room in your life to make a mistake. Um, you're young. You're gonna have to start being, you know, a little more careful with who you pick as an intimate partner because a true intimate partner would never violate your trust. Yeah. You do know that, right? Yes, ma'am. They would <laughs> never violate your trust because they care too much about themselves and you and their own character to violate your trust. Mm -hmm. Mr. Johnson, um, I can't advise her to get over it because... I personally can tell you, I would never get over somebody violating me that way, ever. There was nothing that you could ever say or do that would make me trust you again. What about me opening up my home to her, being there for her when no one was? Mentally, like, I was there for you. Okay, no, you was not. You was not. But you know what? It doesn't matter one way or the other, because let me tell you what we do know. In every relationship, there's a time, a reason, and or a season. Mm -hmm. And at the time, he may have been exactly what you needed. If you were down or emotionally beat down, mm -hmm. that may have been a reason for you to be in her life. If you were young and trying to go through transition, that may have been the season you were in. Yeah. But guess what? Time is up. The reason is over. The season has changed. <laughs> Robert, if that was your daughter, I think this Ooh, dude would cause you to catch a case. If that was my daughter, I'd be wearing a different uniform. I'd be rocking the jumpsuit with the slip-ons. And no belt. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. White socks. Yep. And somebody might be pushing up daisies. Ex absolutely. Oops. Made in Georgia.